Slipknot officially formed in 1995 with founding members Sean Cran, Joey Jordison and Paul Gray. The members that would come to form one of Slipknot's first lineups would also include musicians from various other bands in the area of Des Moines, Iowa. Slipknot's official birthplace. Jim Root played guitar for Atomic Opera, Joey was destroying the drums for thrash band Modifidius, and Sean Cran formed Heads of the Wall, playing a mix of funk metal cover songs. Slipknot have become known for their now iconic on-stage imagery and outfits that consist of jumpsuits branded with a barcode, terrifying masks, and instead of names, they all have a number. And whilst each member generally reveals a new mask with each album cycle, the jumpsuits have been fairly consistent throughout the band's career. However, some would argue that Slipknot stole these ideas from another band that formed a couple of years prior to them. Some of the earliest footage and pictures of Slipknot's lineup before Corey Taylor joined date back to 1996, just one year after their formation. And although their outfits don't exactly look as polished as they do now, the general concept is still there. Masks in some form or another, and what I guess you could consider to be jumpsuits, or at least all-in-one work overalls of some sort. So who exactly are they supposed to have stolen this concept from? Cleveland, Ohio, 1993, two years before the now famous Des Moines Collective came to prominence. A group of masked musicians played their first show. Not only did they don masks, but they also went by pseudonyms instead of their own names, much like the members of Slipknot were each designated a number. There is no denying that Mushroom Head were rocking masks before Slipknot. They played their first show with the masks, in fact. And the reason they say is simple. That's also a reason for the masks. Since we were from different bands and different projects, we didn't want the people in Cleveland to assume we were going to sound like or have any preconceived notions of what Mushroom Head would be. Which is a very similar explanation given by Slipknot when asked why they also wear masks and jumpsuits. Slipknot outlined in an early interview that they wanted people to focus on the music and not the people in the band. They had other reasons, of course, geared more towards the irony of being treated as a commercial product rather than a band. There's also the fact that Mushroom Head started out with eight band members, and Slipknot would also have more than the usual number of musicians for an average band. Although starting with six, Slipknot eventually developed to nine during their early years. There is, however, another possible influence for the masks and jumpsuits. In 1985, an experimental American rock band that went by the name Mr. Bungle started to release demo tapes. Mr. Bungle already had a head start in the music industry due to the fact it was, and still is, fronted by Mike Patton, singer for Faith No More. They would release their debut self-titled record in 1991 on the Warner Brothers label, so it's safe to say Slipknot and Mushroom Head would have absolutely known about Mr. Bungle, and many authors have stated that Mr. Bungle is most likely the biggest influence in terms of Slipknot's stage outfit. Former vocalist for Mushroom Head Jeff Hattrix even stated that Slipknot were Roadrunner invented clones of us and everybody knows it. Mushroom Head were offered a record deal with Roadrunner Records a year before signing Slipknot, but they turned it down. As we all know, Slipknot signed a somewhat ludicrous seven-album deal with the now prestigious label, but Hattrick seemed to think that Roadrunner was trying to essentially invent or mold a band into this concept of masks and jumpsuits or something similar. And there may be some truth to this, as around the time Slipknot were releasing their debut record in 1999, an interview of the band was released showing them in very well put together costumes and masks, something that definitely had the smell of a record label's influence and money behind it. This even led to a feud between Slipknot and Mushroom Head that spanned well over a decade. I'm tired of it. We've tried everything that we could to squash this between ourselves and Mushroom Head. I've even come out and said I wish them nothing but luck. I don't care, it's not that big a deal to me," said Corey Taylor in an interview in 2005. 
It's not as if masked bands in costumes didn't exist before the 90s. You had Gua that formed in 1984, Insane Clown Posse in 1989, and even going back to the 70s when Kiss hit the stage in over-the-top Spaceman-style outfits with painted faces in 1973. And there are members of Slipknot that have gone on record stating that Kiss was a huge influence. Whilst many Mushroomhead fans still to this day are convinced that Slipknot stole the idea of masks and costumes from them, it's also easy to see how Slipknot drew from several bands to create their own unique concept, which is ultimately what the vast majority of artists do anyway, take little ideas from all of their influences to form their own image. So did Slipknot really outright steal the concept of masks jumpsuits and pseudonyms, or was this an idea born from many? Mm -hmm. 